Well, hey guys, let's talk about signs that you are getting too much iron. Now, iron is a super important mineral in our diet. It is essential for the formation of hemoglobin in your red blood cells. Hemoglobin is a protein that is responsible for carrying oxygen from your lungs to the rest of your body. So you can imagine how devastating it is if your iron is too low. Iron deficiency is the most common mineral deficiency worldwide, but you can have too much of a good thing. It's called iron overload. This can happen either because you have an underlying genetic tendency to take up too much iron, that's a condition called hemochromatosis, or it can happen secondary to other things, like maybe you're someone who has to get a lot of blood transfusion, so you are getting in a lot of iron that way, or maybe you're someone who has an underlying anemia that leads to inefficient red blood cell production, and as a result, you have too much iron in the body. But those of you out there who are otherwise healthy, you need to be aware that you could actually get way too much iron if you chronically take in high doses of iron from dietary supplements. Iron overload is a possible risk from doing that. There isn't actually an organ system responsible for excreting and removing iron. The only way to get rid of iron in your body is to bleed or to slough off epithelial cells. Now, because of this, a sustained imbalance between the body's uptake and absorption of iron with its limited abilities to get rid of it can lead you down the path of iron overload. What happens when you have iron overload is that it gets deposited in various organ systems, including your skin, and can lead to organ failure. In the case of the genetic condition, hemochromatosis, where the body just absorbs too much iron, these patients develop heart failure, liver failure, and they develop diabetes because the iron deposits in their pancreas. And they also turn bronze. It's called bronze diabetes. Their skin turns brownish bronzed and becomes discolored. But for individuals who don't have this condition, you can get iron overload, like I said, from other ways, and initially can present with some sort of nonspecific findings. So early signs that you're getting in too much iron, they're really nonspecific. So it's a condition that actually could go missed. Early on, people start to feel really fatigued. They may get diagnosed with chronic fatigue. People who have too much iron in their body, they often frequently have pain in their joints, especially in their fingers. Probably one of the earliest signs that you're getting too much iron is a loss of libido, and in women, amenorrhea. These symptoms, however, are common to a lot of things, including simply just getting older, living in modern society where we are stressed out all the time, having poor sleep. So you can see how this is something that could easily get missed early on. Now, if you've ever taken supplemental iron, you know it can actually be kind of irritating to your stomach. It can cause stomach pain, nausea, constipation is very common. It also can lead to vomiting. And iron supplements actually can interfere fear with the absorption of zinc if you are taking too much. As a side note, I have a video on the skin signs of zinc deficiency. Zinc is super important for your skin, for healing, recovery, as well as for immune function. So definitely check that out if you have any interest in the skin signs of nutritional deficiency on this channel. I have a lot of videos just like that. Anyway, moving on. So what skin signs might you encounter if you are getting too much iron? Hyperpigmentation, but it's a specific type of hyperpigmentation. It's kind of brown to bronze in appearance, but in some people it can actually look almost slate gray. It's frequently in sun exposed areas, so like on your face for example, but a lot of people also develop hyperpigmentation on the skin overlying the genitalia and the hyperpigmentation in the skin folds at the elbows and behind the knees. Women will also develop hyperpigmentation of the areola around their nipples. And in some cases, you can even see a brownish hyperpigmentation of the eyelid margin. Scars may actually get darker. And if you look inside the mouth, sometimes there are hyperpigmented patches inside the mouth. Iron starts to deposit in the glands in your skin and in your mouth, including your salivary gland, which makes saliva. And so people who have iron overload can get dry mouth because their salivary glands aren't working properly. They're not making enough saliva. That can impact your dental health and make you predisposed to getting cavities. The other interesting thing about the hyperpigmentation is that it seems to exhibit some sort of synergy with melanin production in the skin and that people who have this, they tan very easily with hardly any sun exposure. If you take a biopsy of someone's skin who has iron overload, you see an increase in the pigment melanin within the basal layer, the bottom layer of the epidermis, but then you can do some special stains on the biopsy and you can actually see the iron deposited around blood vessels and around the sweat glands. In addition to the hyperpigmentation, the skin discoloration, another classic finding of iron overload as it relates to skin is very dry skin. And what is 
called ichthyosis, a type of dry skin where you have scaliness. It's called an ichthyosiform scale extreme dry skin. As you can imagine, iron overload starts to impact your skin's ability to act as a barrier, to hold in hydration, to lubricate with natural moisturizing factors. And when you have too much iron, your skin becomes atrophic, very thin. It can take on a velvety texture and you can develop loss of body hair or sparse body hair, like loss of pubic hair, loss of hair under your arms. People who have iron overload sometimes develop an interesting finding of their nails called coilonychia, otherwise known as spoon nails, where if you look at the nail plate, there's a central depression, like a little spoon, and the sides of the nails lift up. So it looks like a little spoon, and if you place a droplet of water there, it will stay in place within that depression. Now, I've done some videos here and there about different nail findings and what they mean in terms of your underlying health. You may be somewhat puzzled if you're thinking back to those videos, because if you'll recall, Spoon nails, coilonychia, is actually a nail finding associated with iron deficiency. I talked about it in my video, signs you are iron deficient, so check that one out. But here we're talking about too much iron, yes. Interestingly enough, uh, in the setting of iron overload or hemochromatosis, you can develop coilonychia. Why? We're not entirely sure, but there it is. It's all about balance in the body. Iron, as I said, is essential for your immune system and for healthy immune function. But if you have too much, guess who also really likes iron? Bacteria. And you actually may be at increased risk for bacterial infections, including of the skin. Common bacterial infections that one might encounter in the setting of iron overload include something called cellulitis, which is a bacterial infection that affects the deeper layers of the skin or you could also develop bacterial abscesses. Now I have a video all about recurrent boils where we talk about bacterial abscesses. So if that's something that you deal with, you wanna check that video out because I go into detail there as to different things that can aggravate that condition in people. But yeah, if you have too much iron, it definitely can put you at risk for bacterial infections. Now as the iron gets deposited in the liver, it leads to cirrhosis of the liver, liver disease, liver damage. And with that comes its own host of unique skin findings. One of the things that your liver is tasked with is getting rid of excess estrogen. When your liver goes down because it's full of iron uh, and you have developed cirrhosis, you have elevated levels of estrogen. With that comes a skin finding we talked about in its own dedicated video, palmar erythema, redness on the palms. Definitely check that video out because there are a lot of other conditions where you can develop palmar erythema that are not as not as concerning as iron overload. So check that one out, but you'll recall from that video that liver disease is one of them. And it relates to the liver's uh, task of metabolizing iron when the liver is down, it can lead to uh, increased redness from the increase in circulating estrogen. People who have liver failure, they develop uh, jaundice. They develop a yellowing of the skin. Now these patients with iron overload, they also have the brownish, bronzish discoloration. So sometimes the jaundice may not be obvious in the skin. The best place to look for jaundice early on is actually under the tongue. People who have a damaged liver also will develop what are called spider angiomas, dilated capillaries at the skin surface related to increase in circulating estrogens. At this point in the video, comment below and let me know if you have been staring at your skin all this time trying to figure out if you are bronze yet. Here's the thing, the skin and hair and nail findings that we just went over, by the time those manifest, you are already at a point where you have been taking in way too much iron, way too long, and it's already in a lot of your organs. In the case of secondary iron overload, meaning we're not talking about the genetic condition, but in secondary iron overload, the skin findings are a late manifestation. By the time you have the hyperpigmentation, the iron levels in the body are already quite high. How do you get rid of all this excess iron since the body does not have an organ system to excrete it? Phlebotomy, meaning removing blood. The other way is uh, something called a chelating medication, desferoxy. I mean, how much iron should you be getting a day? The recommended daily allowance of iron varies from person to person, life stage to life stage. It's gonna be higher in women who menstruate because of the blood loss. You need more iron if you are pregnant because you're growing a baby. The needs for iron are quite high. Uh, as well as with breastfeeding. Adolescents um, you know, need to make sure they're getting good iron because their bones and things are growing, which all re require iron. But how much is too much? The tolerable upper intake level, which is the maximum amount that you could take in per day without any adverse effects to your health, is 45 milligrams per day for adult men and women.
women. Now, to be clear, you are not gonna get iron overload from just like eating foods that are iron rich, unless I suppose it's possible if you're someone who eats a ton of organ meats because they actually have a very high iron level as well as vitamin A. You do have to worry about vitamin A toxicity, but unless you are subsisting off of organ meats, Mm, unlikely. But you do need to be cautious about it if you are someone who takes supplements because a lot of dietary supplements these days have iron and you may take multiple dietary supplements and you can get to iron overload taking dietary supplements with iron unnecessarily over a long period of time. That being said, supplementing with iron may be necessary in certain conditions, so follow the advice of your treating healthcare provider. For example, in pregnancy, you know, prenatal vitamins will have iron in them. Uh, so definitely follow along with what your healthcare provider is recommending for you. But if you're just someone out there who is otherwise healthy and you take a lot of supplements thinking that they're just supplementing your health, do realize that if you are taking multiple supplements that have iron in them, you could put yourself at risk for iron overload, which can be deadly. And again, your body doesn't have a good way to excrete and get rid of excess iron like it does, you know, water soluble B vitamins that are frequently found in a lot of vitamins, you know, you just pee them out. With iron, it can get stored in these organ systems and build up there and cause organ damage. These skin, hair, and nail findings, they're not gonna pop up right away. By the time these appear, you already have significant iron overload in the organs that can definitely be very detrimental to your health. And you're going to, at that point, need medical interventions to remove the excess iron. Taking too much iron definitely can put you in harm's way. Now, how common is iron overload related to supplements? It's not super common. I would say what's more common with taking in too much iron from supplements is acute toxicity. Uh, namely, somebody taking in too much all at once causes problems with the stomach lining or children, unfortunately, you know, getting into someone's supplements and thinking that they're candy and getting seriously deadly ingestion with way too much. I mean, that that's really a very sad thing because, you know, it's, it can be quite damaging. All right, you guys, that's what I wanted to share about iron overload and the skin and hair and nail findings. Now, if you like videos like this, all about the skin signs of health problems, you're gonna wanna check out my playlist on skin signs not to miss, because I have a lot of videos in there that go over all of the different cutaneous manifestations of different health problems like diabetes, high cortisol, you name it, you'll probably find it there. So check that playlist out. And on the end slate, I'm going to put my recent video all about what red palms mean. So you can catch up on that if you missed it. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.